Tell Mr. Rump that you see now. I didn't know that. That was me last week. Is that in the manual? <laughs> you're getting written up. All oh, right, you're gonna go sit in the penalty <laughs> box for a while. talk to you about that. We had a change of plans. Yes, Kate. So I have a uh, COVID-19. So everybody, if you really well, today about the blue, um, the blue cube, so 
that's really good. And for anybody not here, if you have, does anybody not have communion elements? Okay, I'll give you one. Yes. Okay, so we're picking up the community elements on the first uh, Sunday in the back right now. Okay? Anyone else? And I'll just announce that we're going to have a wonderful Sunday morning together. Those of you in person, those of you with us on Facebook and YouTube, blessings to all.
there a joy? Is there a joy that you have experienced? Uh, yes, Molly. Reading is taken from Exodus 
chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Our gospel lesson for today is taken from John chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Here ends the reading of today's scripture. Children and young people, Exhibit A, you know what this is? You ever seen one? Shout it out if you know. Maybe it's a little television. <laughs> It's a GPS, yes. These, these are kind of going out of style. I mean, everything goes out of style so quickly because a lot of us use our phones for the same purpose. GPS meaning global positioning satellite, uh, I don't know what it means. But it helps you to get where you're going when you're trying to go somewhere. You ever, you ever in a car with somebody, your parents or somebody, and they get lost? Maybe, uh, maybe you haven't had that happen. Are they happy when they're lost? No, no. <laughs> we don't like to be lost when we're driving. And so the GPS tells us where to go, and some of us use our phones. And uh, sometimes I, I think I know better. You know, I'll go a different way, and uh, I end up getting lost, or at least sometimes. Sometimes I, I say, I don't need this. Actually, my wife says it more than I do, but <laughs> nonetheless, what happens when you say, I don't need it? 
Well, you might also get lost unless you're really confident in yourself. So, what we're looking at here today are, is a kid's version of the Ten Commandments. You've, you've heard of the Ten Commandments, haven't you? Sure, you've, you've heard about them. Uh, it's, it's something you don't just hear once because it's something that we, we take with us through our whole life because it's like a GPS for life. If, if, we, if we do these things, it's going to help us to stay on the right track. Okay? I made some copies of these, not enough, and they're out by the door, you know. So, uh, if any of you want to... But don't fight over it. It's in the Bible, okay? You can find it there too. But uh, that's a little easier way to see it. Uh, but what's the most important thing of all the commandments? What's the most important thing? It's the one word I, I'm looking for. Love. Oh. Anybody hear that? Love. Please move it ahead to the next one, Tracy. Love God and love others. That's the great commandment. And all those other commandments, if we do it with love, we're on the right track. So, it's good to keep learning. Learn what they mean. When you read them, what does God say to you? Let's have a little prayer. Dear God, I pray that you would bless our children and young people today and all. May you guide us through life. May we follow your guidance with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Amen. And so, some of you are going to head off to Sunday school.
well-being. I read a story about a certain church where members would go to the pastor from time to time for advice and counseling. Sounds good to me. Well, when the pastor was asked, you know, how did he do it, he, he said this. He said, I just ask questions until I figure out which commandment they're breaking, and then I tell them to stop it. <laughs> okay, I don't know if he was using his seminary training to the fullest on that, but, but you know, maybe he's on to something. Of course, many of the issues in our lives take a little bit more work to understand what they are and where they came from. They're not so simple or easily solved, but there's no question that you can't willingly violate the spirit of these commandments and have a satisfying life. I'll stand on that one. The Ten Commandments given to us for our own well-being. It's like the white lines. You know, on the, on the road, uh, they usually have a line, white line on either side of the road. And we were out exploring yesterday, and yeah, you know, you all know, this is a realization that we just got, uh, came to us this weekend, is that there's a lot of windy roads that go up and down and up and down and all around around here. And so, especially on our coming back from Tamaqua last night, oh. it was very good to have those lines, at least for me. <laughs> and if you stay within the lines, you're going to be okay. First three commandments deal with our relationship with God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make idols or misuse the name of the Lord your God. The commandments begin with God. And there's that quote that I put up this morning from H.G. Wells, supposedly from him. If there isn't a God, nothing matters. But if there is a God, nothing else matters. I think what, what the point would be that, that God is the focus, is the foundation. God's love given and received is the most important thing. Not that nothing else is, of course, but it all, shall I say, trickles down from that, from that basic truth. One reason we treasure the Ten Commandments is that we believe they come from God. And so we begin by pledging our allegiance to God above everything else in our lives. We're not going to put money, status, power, comfort ahead of our devotion to God. Uh, God is first in all things. We reverence God's name in all things and in all, and in all we want to bring honor to God's name. We don't do this perfectly. I think that's, that's a given, isn't it? Yeah. That's why we have to keep coming back and, and look at and reflect and reflect First three commandments deal with our relationship with God, and the fourth one, with our relationship with ourselves. Remember the, the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So Jesus was criticized a lot about things he did on the, on the Sabbath day. He, he uh, allowed his disciples to pick heads of grain while they were going through a grain field on the Sabbath day and to eat them. Sabbath was made for humankind. He said, not humankind, but Sabbath. The Sabbath is... And that's an amazing teaching. One of many amazing teachings from Jesus. That the Sabbath was made for people, not for God. So, the religious leaders at that time had a lot of rules about how one was to be obedient to God. And sometimes they went a little bit too far. Remember how they criticized for healing a man on the Sabbath. That's too far, isn't it? An act of love, an act of compassion, an act of God. It was stunning for Jesus to say the Sabbath was meant for people rather than for God. But you might ask, what, what does that say about worship on the Sabbath? God does mean for us to worship on the Sabbath. <clears throat> But worship.
worship. Get ready, this may shock some, but worship is not for God. God doesn't need to be worshipped. We need to worship our God. God knows that. We need at least once a week. And I would say every day, in one way, shape, or form, we need to affirm what's critical in our lives. And that is our relationship with God. It's so much goes on. Wherever we are, on the job, all the things that we have to struggle with and, and it so easily goes out the window. We need that coming back. Season of Lent is about that. Everybody needs a time to rest and reflect the Sabbath. Is that hard for you? It's hard for me. I sit down Join my wife watching TV, and then three minutes later, I'm up and got to do something. But sometimes it's important to stop and be silent. The Bible was written, it was common for people to be forced to work seven days a week, but of course that, that doesn't work well. It's good for physical or spiritual health. It's counterproductive. The final six commandments deal with our relationships with others. Six commandments. Honor your father and mother, don't murder, don't commit adultery, do not commit adultery or steal, don't bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's anything. We need to take those things seriously, seriously, not just because they're for our own good, but also they're part of our witness to the world that we are followers of Jesus. And it really impacts us in that way and others. They're only going to take positive notice of us in this world to the extent that we're genuine, that we're for real, that our faith practice and devotion to God is the real thing. And how we express that love to others. So on this third Sunday of Lent, Give you a little overview, I guess, of what I did this morning. I give you an ex assignment to read through those commandments. While you're at it, read the one about love God and love your neighbor as yourself too. Think about how they Im impact your own life and how we follow those commandments and where we we need to do some work. Interpret them widely. It's a great way to find meaning in the practice of this season of Lent. Amen. Now I'll ask you to stand. We will together recite our statement of faith. We believe in God, the eternal Spirit, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father. And to his deeds we testify. He calls the worlds into being, creates man in his own image, and sets before him the way of his life and death. He, he seeks in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. He judges them and nations by his righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Lord, he has come to us share our common law, honoring sin and death, and reconciling the world to the gospel. He bestows upon us his Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. He calls us into his Church to accept the cross and joy to be his servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, and to resist the power of evil, to share in Christ's baptism, and eat at his table, and join him in his passion and victory. He promises to all who trust him forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, his presence in trial and rejoicing, 
one great hour to share. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hate this. How many of you are smiling? Raise your hands. Um, <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. All right. So um, last year, when we were in the middle of searching for our wonderful minister, and it was COVID and everything, we're not really very good at doing uh, collections for missions. So we had a conversation in consistory about this. And what we're going to do, we're going to do it a little bit differently this year. Um, we're going to have a uh, collection every month. And I'm going to tell you what the collection is for that particular month. And you can decide if you want to join in supporting it. You will have the whole month to do that. Usually we will give you envelopes and then you have a collection on one Sunday. So you're going to be able to put the envelopes, this one is one great hour of sharing, in the collection place when you come in. Next to the collection place you'll find these envelopes. So, uh, and we're going to do that every month. So, and if you don't feel good touching envelopes that we've been touching, you can bring one from home and just put it on that this is the monthly mission envelope for you. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing. So some of them will be the standard collections. One great hour of sharing is a collection taken up, I think, all over the world. So we will do some of those. But we're also going to do some where we'll be asking adults in the congregation to support things like projects for our kids. So we're hoping that this year we'll give the children a chance to do kits for several places. We'd like them to do them for Bethany Children's Home. We'd like them to do them for some of our shut-ins. So we'll have a challenge for us each month, and you'll have the entire month to respond. So this is the first month, and this one is on one great hour of sharing. And in reading what they said about themselves this year, I love the first line. Whether we like it or not, our lives are deeply intertwined. And if we have never thought about that, this whole thing with COVID, all of us in the world trying desperately, all of us, everywhere, every island, every place in the world, we're all struggling with this together. So we are totally intertwined. Um, but we are also in America blessed in many, many ways with great abundance. And there are parts of the world that are not. Um, they mention a lot of the things that this money can do. And the amazing thing is, it's not a lot of money for us, but it does amazing things in other places. So I'll just mention one, and that is just getting water. There are a lot of places where getting water is an all-day job for the mother of the house, because she has to walk it, uh, sometimes a mile or two, with heavy buckets, and get water and bring it back. There are a lot of places that do not, I mean, we run the water all the time when we shouldn't be doing it, um, and just let the tap run. They have no water, so they have to go and get it. And sometimes it's not even clean water. Um, so that kind of mission is what this envelope will help. So we ask that you consider whether you want to give to One Great Hour of Sharing. Next month, I'll bring you another mission challenge. Um, and I think that this is a really good way for us who have so much to share something that means so much to other people in the world. Thank you. Thank you. And now let's reflect on our giving to God, and we thank you. I thank you all who have uh, saw the offering plate by the door. There's another one over here. And, or avail yourself of that opportunity at other times. Continue to give your gifts to those of you that are worshiping from home during this whole, uh, these difficult days that we've been going through. It is much appreciated. It is also an act of love for God. And we thank God for all that he has given and continues to provide in our lives. Please stand.
remain standing, if you will, because this morning we are going to celebrate the Lord's Supper together on this first Sunday of the month. And before we begin, we would want to, I want to offer the opportunity, if there is any who would like hand sanitizer, I think we have some back there, and a few people who would be able to dispense that. Come to this table. All who desire to follow Christ to partake of this, the supper of the Lord. This is a time to embrace Christ, to embrace renewed spiritual lives for us all. Remember that Christ was born, lived, and died that we might have strength for today. The freedom to become all we can be in Christ's service every day and life eternal. May the Lord be with you. Also. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God Most High. Holy God, you created this planet full of life. And you created humans in your image. You taught our ancestors how to live in your world by giving them challenges and the ability to face them. You brought them out of captivity in Egypt into fullness of life. You sent prophets to teach them. Most of all, you sent us your child, Jesus, who showed us through his loving example how much you love us. And now you call us to follow in his footsteps, carrying your message of hope and justice to the whole world. Creating us in your image, you offered us the challenges of living in your complex world. And so we join with all creation to praise you, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabbath, heaven and earth are full are full of the majesty of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Please hear the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the night of his arrest gathered around the Passover table with his closest followers, of which this table is symbolic of, for that last meal, Jesus wanted to share something important and powerful and something that would last with them and with all of his followers. He took the bread. He gave thanks to God for providing. And he broke it. And he said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this, partake of this bread, in remembrance of me. And then after supper, Jesus took the cup.
He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. And he said, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do this in remembrance of me till I come again. These are the words of our Lord, the living Christ. And therefore we proclaim the mystery of our faith, that Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Let us pray. Holy God, descend your spirit upon these gifts of grain and grape, that they might mediate to us the presence of the living Christ. Pour out your spirit upon us so that we might be reflections of your likeness in a hurting world so that others might know the blessings of living in communion with you and one another. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And before we partake of the elements this morning, we offer our prayers for each other, for friends and family and loved ones, in the prayers that are on your hearts today. A reminder uh, that uh, we are praying uh, joyful prayers for a little Macy Stone who had a good report on her uh, bone marrow test this past week and is in remission now from this uh, leukemia. So we, we do thank God for that. We have added to our list uh, uh, Kim Bonner's cousin Linda, Linda Decker, who is dealing with pain right now, and uh, that is kind of quite debilitating and uh, expecting surgery soon, but, uh, but the strength and, and God's healing presence to deal with it. Let's go to God in prayer and then together the prayer that Jesus taught us. We thank you, dear Lord, for, the, for every day, the gift of life. We don't always thank you for the challenges, although many times through them we get closer to you. But we pray for those in particular who are dealing with medical issues, with pain, worries, anxieties, financial difficulties, loss of a job, so many things, so many things that weigh us down. We open our hearts to you and we pray that for our friends and family as well, that we would all allow your life-changing and healing spirit in to do your work with us. Give us hope, give us joy, give us the desire to serve. Through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Prepare your hearts for all things are ready.
take and drink the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and I. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, until we meet again.